Good evening, dear Truro friends, and welcome to uh, my home, to the library in the bishopric of the Diocese of Strengness. It's not a bishop behind my back, it's actually a painting I bought when I got my first student loan. Silly of me, but I like the picture. Well, the Diocese of Strengness and the Diocese of Truro, we're twinned together since um, 20 years, over 20 or, or about 20 years now. How come? Well, it all actually began when, when the Porvo Agreement was fairly new in the 1990s and my predecessor, by, but one, Bishop Jonas Johnson, together with all the bishops of the Church of Sweden, uh, had a retreat in Lincolnshire, and uh, which was led by a charismatic uh, bishop, the bishop, uh, the then bishop of Grantham, Bishop Bill Ind. So when Bishop Bill was uh, translated to um, Truro, uh, my pre -pre predecessor, Bishop Jonas. Uh, enjoy the, the friendship of, of Bishop Bill. And so when Bishop Bill came to Truro, well, Strengness came as well, only a few years later. Now, the rest is actually just a fabulous, wonderful, uh, happy story of us being together. Um, our such a lot of things have has happened throughout the years. I mean, we've had parish parishes meeting parishes. Uh, uh, lots of us have been to to Truro over and over again, and a number of you have been to Sweden over and over again. Choirs have met choirs, youth groups have met youth groups. Our diocesan council have been to Truro. Um, uh, your cathedral choir, uh, the fabulous supercalifragic. Expolicious Alidocious Cathedral Choir of the Cathedral of Truro has been to Strengness when I was the Cathedral Dean. Um, our now the, the Dean of the of the Cathedral now Bishop uh, Dean Christopher, when he was a young man, he he uh, I think he did two summers with you uh, in Truro, uh, and I together with my chaplain Magdalena had the great privilege and joy to be part of uh, the uh, enthronement of Bishop Philip only a few years ago. Well, only to mention a few, a fraction of all the, what we've been through uh, since we, our twinning began. Some of you already know our diocese uh, with its 900 years, 900 plus years actually, uh, which makes us one of the more senior uh, diocese of the Church of Sweden. We are well connected in the respect that we are well placed in Sweden uh, in the vicinity of Stockholm, the, the capital, uh, uh, Stockholm or 50% of uh, Stockholm, the Diocese of Stockholm used to belong to the Diocese of Strängles until the 1940s actually. Uh, and we are, we call ourselves the most neighborly diocese in the whole of the Church of Sweden and that is because seven of the other 13 dioceses in the Church of Sweden uh, are, are our neighbours. So they are surround, they surround us. Uh, in in, uh, in uh, geographical and uh, demographical, demographical terms we are a diverse diocese with the large cities uh, two university cities uh, and, uh, and suburbs uh, with lots of immigration and a lot, a lot of uh, rural communities as well. If you look at the map of our diocese, you will see that the Lake Mälaren uh, uh, really plays a significant uh, part of our, it's sort of significant when you look at our map. And that is, uh, of course, why we are formed as we are. If you go in one direction, one direction on, our, on the lake, you go to, you end up in Stockholm and then out into the sea. And if you go to in the other direction, 
you can go through lakes and, and other waterways uh, to the other side of Sweden. So uh, Strängnäs has always been very centrally placed. Uh, the tradition uh, demographically is that, of course, the part of our diocese which is nearest to Stockholm used to be uh, dominated by large estates, uh, great landowners uh, and uh, uh, farmers working under those in those sort of in those communities whereas in the other side of the diocese there were more smallholders or, or large farmer large larger farms they owned themselves or, or a lot of uh, industry uh, so the, the sort of spiritual life of our diocese is fairly diverse or used to be fairly diverse more diverse than it is today with more of a sort of middle of the road or uh, slightly Catholic uh, strand nearer to Stockholm and more low church, uh, free church uh, touch on the other side of the diocese. But that is really not no, long, not, not, no longer true. Uh, I mean, we are said to be one of them, placed in one of the mo more secularized uh, uh, parts of Sweden. And Sweden in itself is uh, coined as one of the most secularized societies in the world. I'm not sure that is true, but uh, it is the way sociologists say. Someone else will be able to give you all the exact figures, but uh, approximately 370,000 out of 665,000 inhabitants in our uh, part of the country belong to the Church of Sweden. So 370,000 members of the Church of Sweden in our diocese. We have 73 parishes, we have 190 priests and uh, 75 permanent deacons and of course a lot of retired clergy as well. So those are the in active service, the 190 and 75. It's a lively diocese. Um, Size-wise, we think of ourselves as, uh, as uh, big enough to be dynamic, and as I said, we are quite diverse, and small enough to be able, technically anyway, to know each other by first name. Our cathedral city, Strängnäs, uh, is uh, beautifully placed by, at, by the Lake Mälaren. It's a sm tiny, tiny city, beautiful, little cosy, idyllic city with a beautiful, beautiful cathedral uh, which I and many would say is one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the country. It is very well preserved. It has not been destroyed through uh, the, all the sort of the renovations. It's been very, it, it's very well kept and uh, on a Sunday when it's not uh, a pandemic or pandemic of course, lots of people uh, come to the uh, worship uh, worship there and throughout the week of course uh, and the bishopric which is uh, just a few uh, stone throws away from the cathedral is beautiful substantial uh, from the 1640s it's a privilege to to live in such a beautiful beautiful and cozy house uh, uh, and the offices of the um, dios, diocesan office, it's, we are ho housed in a, two uh, uh, buildings just close by, nearby the, the cathedral. And they are old. They are, one of them is actually medieval and one is from the 18th century. Uh, we, re we truly treasure our link with you. Uh, You've taught us a lot throughout the years. You have encouraged our ministry. And as you know, we pray for you every single week throughout the diocese. Uh, we uh, we sh cherish uh, our relationship with you and we are happy to, to uh, develop that further. Of course, any twinning... Uh, is bound to the intensity of any twinning is bound to differ over time. That's only natural, and especially now when it's a, we have the pandemic. Of course, we have no opportunity to to visit each other. But there are, times will change, and soon we'll be able to to come together. 
in, re in real life. Uh, and uh, we have lots of things on our uh, plate, uh, our, our common, our shared plate. Uh, we've spoken about youth work, we've spoken about uh, church music, choirs, we've spoken about leadership, uh, we've talk, spoken about um, uh, people, sort of volunteers, uh, we're talking about environmental issues, well, lots and lots of things which we are keen on, on uh, you are keen on and we are keen on and uh, we are even keener together. So uh, uh, we are uh, hoping to see you soon. Now I know that my chaplain Magdalena and, uh, and uh, Anne, uh, one of, uh, of my dear um, colleagues, are keen to say some a few words to you as well, uh, because they are our contacts persons, just as Perrin is a cherished and and uh, and a greatly loved contact person from your side of the, uh, as uh, Evelyn Waugh said, uh, Herring Pond. So over to you, uh, 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 Magdalena and Anne. Hello, friends in the Diocese of Truro. I am Magdalena, Bishop Johann's chaplain. And I am also, together with Anne, that you will meet in a little while, working with our international relations and partnership dioceses. And you are one of those. I had the great pleasure of being present in the Cathedral of Truro on the enthronement of Bishop Philip. It was really a great joy to be a part of this festive occasion. But it was also a really great joy to meet you, our friends in Truro. And I really hope that when the pandemic is over, that we will meet again. You may come to us and we may come to you because it is so important that we keep our friendship and relationship alive. We want to get to know you even better and we want to learn from you and we want to be together in prayer. And as they would say in another of our partnership dioceses, the Northwestern Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania. Tutaonana tena mungu akipenda. We will meet again if God wants. Hello dear friends in Truro. My name is Anne Falk and I work for the Diocese of Strengnes. I work together with Magdalena, whom you've met, to uphold and develop our international relationships with dioceses around the world. I also work to support and promote uh, other international contacts as well as international mission and diaconia in our congregations. I know from both personal and previous work experience that contacts with people and churches around the world is important for us not only as individuals but also as churches. When we share and learn from each other, when we talk about faith and everyday life with each other, we can uh, see things from new angles and develop both as people and as churches and we become a worldwide church. And this is why I think it's so important for us to continue uh, to have this relationship and to develop it and to meet both via digital means and in real life when the circumstances allow us again. And of course I look forward to the day when I can visit Truro and meet you all and uh, see for myself all the beauty that people talk about. I also uh, long for the day when I can greet you here in Stainless. Until then, I 
wish you all the best and stay safe. Thank you.